Now I'll use Control X2 to split the screen and Control X ampersand, that's above the 7, Shift 7, to get to the slime REPL which has my GDL user prompt. And now we can test this function, square of 3, and sure enough we get back 9. Square of 5, let's say, and we get 25. We'll do a quick version of this square except in Gendel instead of in straight common list. So if we wanted to do it in Gendel, we could have a define object. We use define object and we can call this object square just as with the function. Now instead of an argument list, we have a mix-in list here, which in the case of this object definition, it, it does not need any mix-ins. Now I'll hit tab to indent properly and now we can put input slots, a single input slot called number. Now we'll have computed slots and a single computed slot, which will be the result. And the expression for that would be multiply the number by the number. So three ways to compile. Control C, Control K compiles the entire file. Control C, Control C highlights and compiles the top level expression that we're inside right now. And if you go to the end of the expression, Control X, Control E evaluates it into memory quickly with an interpreter. So normally control C, control C would compile that definition. And now we can say make self square with the input of number being three and ask for the result, which is nine. So the purpose of both functions and objects is first it accepts some inputs, possibly performs some side effects, although we like to minimize side effects when possible. And finally compute one or more outputs. Now the differences come in with how do you use it? You call the function by name by evaluating a Lisp expression. For objects, you first create or retrieve an object, get a hold of one from somewhere, and then send messages to the object to get outputs from it. To define, you use defun with the name and then the arguments in a list and then the body like we've seen. For an object, we use define object with a name, just like with the defun, and then a list of mix-ins, and then the specifications. To decompose the complexity, with a function, you call other functions from inside a function. With an object, you inherit slots so that you don't have to repeat the code from those other definitions, and then include objects of other types inside your object as well. Here's an example of an object that simply mixes in a base object and doesn't implement anything else in its specification. Base object happens to be a built-in primitive in Gendel. Here's a UML diagram of a basic wing surface. It inherits from a surface, or in our case the empty surface, and it provides messages. Now the UML diagram specifies data types on these values. In the Gendel it's not necessary to specify a data type. The data type is determined by the actual value that ends up being computed for that slot. Notice these are written alphabetically. The order of these computed slots does not have any effect. So the expression can either be a constant value or an actual expression which computes the value on demand. So here's our object for the wing with an empty surface. And Control-C, Control-C, we compile that into memory. So what we have here is the basic definition or recipe or blueprint, if you will. But we don't have any actual instances of any wing yet. So to do that, we can use the make object operator. We call make object on a quoted symbol because make object is a function. So it operates on the literal quoted symbol in order to make an object of type wing. So we can say at the command line now in make object wing. Now, just calling make object wing by itself returns a wing object but I don't have a way to refer to that because I did not set it to any sort of variable. So I can set it to a just a temporary global variable for testing purposes with set Q. So set Q, give a name, and then the expression. Now I have a wing in this variable obj. If I evaluate the variable, I see the wing. Now I can use the reference operator, the object. When I see the object obj, and then ask it for its taper, for example and there it returns the value one half. And note the value of taper is a rational number. It does not automatically convert to a floating point, 0 0.5. As a shorthand, we can set Q a special variable self to an instance. Now we don't need to use the object with the object name. We can just use the shorthand the instead. And note there's heavy use of the inside the object definition itself in order to refer to other messages within the same definition because self is always understood to be set to the local object while you are defining it.